welcome to video lecture of uh, introduction to crosstalk why and how crosstalk occurs in nature the top, uh, whole topic has been uh, di divided into four different sub uh, topics they are introductions dominant electrical capacitance noise margin voltage parameters and lower supply voltage in these topics we will discuss different uh, aspects of crosstalk they how to remedify it and what are the different uh, uh, factors which affect crosstalk and what are the different you know, crosstalks are there let me start from introducing this see the wires which are linking transistor together are called interconnects and they what they do in there they offer they offer a capacitive coupling they are because of they are very narrow they drive in uh, up the resistance to the point that means uh, from where source to sink their resistance will flow in many single path the wire rc delay exceed gate delay because of their uh, uh, capacitance effect and the resistance effect that their delay exceed with the gate delays so why the wires are packed very closely together and this their large fraction of their capacitance is to their neighbors whatever capacitance they have been there it is because of their neighbor it is the uh, <coughs> a and this is b they, because wire flowing through uh, wires far flowing from a to a or somewhere else but fire one flow wire flowing from b to somewhere else they offer they offer a kind of capacitor see then once wire switches it tends to affect its neighbor this is through the capacitive coupling and this is factors known as crosstalk so what is capacitive coupling capacitors are the adjacent uh, cap capacitors in between of two uh, uh, gates and their uh, interconnects and their uh, uh, to the ground and the capacitance between uh, these two uh, um, gates or devices and capacitor and interconnects to the ground cost of delay effect how cost of uh, comes to the uh, into uh, delay, uh, delaying the circuit uh, propagation let me see if both wire and neighbors are switching and the direction of switching affects the amount of charge that must be delivered and the delay of the switching let me verify this thing see so wire a is switching and b is constant then change in voltage is vdd and change in effective capacitance of aggressor that is the a that is a is this then miller coupling factor is v so it says uh, simply if they are di directions the same as a and direction opposite to a we got this uh, parameter over there we will divide this in this way also let me see crosstalk noise effect let me see that um, while a switches while b is supposed to remain constant in our previous uh, parameter this introduces noise as a b partially switches in this case b switches but partially we can call a as the aggressor or b as the victim and then the victim voltage will be a capacitive voltage divider uh, as a um, to comp uh, we can compute victim voltage using this capacitive voltage divider. Uh, this is C and it. This is the uh, coupling uh, to the floating victim. So this is aggressor and this is the adjacent voltage and this is the voltage because interconnect band in between the ground. These are the capacitive. If the victim is different, it is also switching there. The driver, the driver which was uh, actually switching uh, in uh, uh, aggressor as well as in victim, they actually suppose uh, the you know, victim noise. We model the driver as resistor. This driver is as resistor is actually oppose uh, the um, noise in the victim, and this will be given by factor one upon one plus k. This is the by coupling with the driver is also a victim is also actively driven. This is the diagram where we modeled uh, <coughs> A net as a R aggressor. See, this is waveform for coupling noises. What happened when uh, the victim is undriven? That means constant. So there is a fifty percent of noise cost can be possible. 
in case of that but if we go to increase the size of victim or decrease the size of victim what we got if victim is half size driver then there is a 16 percent but if victim is equal size of driver driver then eight percent of it victim is double size of driver then slowly we will find that the noise is going to be low down inductive cross talks inductance as we know that one wire can directly couple onto other so this will call inductive cross it's actually a, a, a very important for wide buses which are uh, far away from their current return paths so two buses are uh, there they are very far to uh, each of them but they are uh, uh, they are near to their current return path away and they are from there away from their current return. let me see this is inductance means that if one portion of the chip requires a rapidly increasing amount of current rapidly increase amount of that charge for that rapidly increase amount of current for that charge must be delivered from nearby decoupling capacitors they that they got that uh, uh, increasing amount of current from decoupling capacitors of supply phase portion of chip further away from, uh, are unaware of the charging current that those things which are those uh, chip portions which are quite away, uh, quite away from the, this from this part of the chip they are unaware of changing currents until a speed of light that means a uh, light flight that is very uh, fast transition uh, has elapsed if, if this will be there then uh, they can only understand there is a kind of uh, inductive crosstalk is going to happen either they will not supply current immediately they won't supply current immediately we will find out this wireless and ages read for which inductance impacts the delay see this is the wireless and this is the delays as we go on increasing the wireless uh, the delay is also increasing but till 100 micro uh, 100 micrometer inductance is more uh, prominent but after that rc delay is going to dominate similarly rise time and rc dominant and for that only rc, uh, RC rise time will be dominant see this is the diagram model of the clock line as a five stage pi model with uh, uh, without with a with the uh, with a inductance and without inductance see this is the response of the each model each model uh, to an ideal voltage source with 80 ps my peak of second rise time this is a 80 pico rise time they have we in is ideally this should be like this because of rc delay it will follow this but because of rlc delay it will go to shoot up here this kind of things happen if we take into account the resistance uh, inductance into the so this is uh, what about the uh, uh, cross talk capacitive cops cross talk and inductive cross next we will understand different thing that is the dominant lateral capacitance what happened uh, what is uh, when capacitance will be lateral capacitance will be get dominance how it affects the lateral capacitance is formed by two parallel edges of non overlapping uh, in in two dimensions only conducted in the same plane when uh, lateral capacitance is the uh, capacitance is a coupling capacitance of two parallel edges of no, no non overlapping and uh, the two dimensions for two plate uh, parallel connected edges with a uniform vertical profile in the capacitor vertical profile means there is two dimension the same thing in the capacitor edge, the lateral capacitor is given by this formula where l is the length of the parallel edge the two conductor L1 and L1, that means they are in the same plane and F uh, L1 L1 I is the capacitance per unit age of two parallel edges of the conductors distance D apart in the presence of a vertical profile I they are in the vertical profile in the I am going to show you this. this is the vertical profile I this is this is vertical profile I so two conductors are there and they have been uh, put in this in D distance apart then they have this is top field, this is cross section then the capacitance they have offered this is known as lateral capacitance this is the schematic for top view and side view 
द मोस्ट कॉमन इफेक्ट ऑफ इंटरकनेक्ट कपलिंग कैपेसिटर्स आर कंसिडर्ड टू बी इंड्यूज बाय नॉइज एंड डिले सी वी हैव डिस्कस नॉइज एंड डिले बोथ दे राइट नाउ वी गोइंग टू डिस्कस द क्रॉस ट्रैक इंड्यूज नॉइज वेल सिग्नल इन एडजेसेंट वायर लिसन केयरफुल वेल इन सिग्नल इन एडजेंट वायर ट्रांजिशन बिटवीन लॉजिक वैल्यूज एंड द कैपेसिटिव कपलिंग बिटवीन वायर फॉल द चार्ज ट्रांसफर सिग्नल एडजेंट वायर transition between logic value in there that aggressor aggressor is change, signal adjacent wires they have been changing see this is the changing so this is uh, kind of this much of a, uh, voltage noise voltage will generate over here in the victim net that is cross talk induced noise depending on the rate of change of the signal and the amount of coupling capacitance there can be a significant possibility of noise injection between the aggressor and victim wire for a capacitive coupler a coupler system the aggressor is the wire that has the most signal entity and the victim is the quiet one for capacitive both are actually both the net are aggressor as well as victim but one which having the most signal activity is known as aggressor and though that one which is a quiet one it is a victim to calculate coupled voltage noise amplitude voltage charge sharing models are are used as a closed form expression for the peak amplitude of coupled noise induced by the aggressor and is given by the formula you have seen on the screen this is the vn noise this is the supply voltage and this is cv cx this is the victim capacitance this is the uh, <coughs> this is the ground cv this is the ca from uh, aggressor and this is cx coupling capacitance and ra upon rb re and rv are this is the modeled r resistance uh, model of uh, aggressor as well rv of uh, a victim and c a and c v are the capacitive of uh, aggressor and uh, and victim from, from the ground if r a and r v approaches zero that means their resistance are infinitesimally small we think of that then this will become again uh, the basic cross talk noise charge model value which is uh, nothing more than a, a function of capacitive voltage divider apart from noise injection due to cross talk capacitance uh, the capacitance also has a serious impact on the adjacent wire delay it can also delay the uh, signal propagation that means timing also affect it affect the uh, signal uh, conditions that means uh, because of noise signal will be deteriorated as well as it will get delayed because of cross talk this situation become even more complex when signal simultaneously switches on the both aggressor and victim interconnect uh, in, in victim interconnect here is the problem here is the main thing the problem noise arises when aggressor is switching and victim is quiet but delay happens only when both are simultaneously switching aggressor and victim see we have consider two parallel interconnect line driven by logic gates depending on the activity of these line their effective capacitance may be altered by the amount of coupling capacitance see if the aggressor line driver changes from high to low and the victim line is in the ground state that means it is, it is not functioning it is uh, quiet then the coupling capacitance may cause the effective load capacitance on the aggressor line to be less than uh, for ca plus cx or cv plus cx ca is the uh, capacitance of aggressor to the ground and this is the coupling capacitance so they can be less than for this if the victim line driver is in the power supply state both are uh, having uh, having transition then the effective capacitance of the aggressor line may exceed this for the ca plus cx or the same effect can also be observed when the transition changes in the opposite direction for both aggressor and victim line then ca plus 2 cx or cv plus 2 cx this is important 2 cx that means two times of that uh, of coupling and transition uh, charge uh, coupling capacitance Uh, will be uh, reflect over there see there are several techniques that can be applied to minimize coupling effect the most effective one is to increase the spacing between neighbor wires at the same time but it is also uh, 
having some uh, difficulties that is area we need more area the, while this technique may be effective for selective internet such as clock signal it is not economic efficient for global application due to this wiring area effect see if we go to um, uh, increase the spacing we need more space more area another method that is used to minimize or even eliminate the delay unpredictably uh, 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 in a capacitive couple system is to make sure that the aggressor and the victim driver strength and the corresponding capacitor loading are the same we have find out that either they will be less than for this for uh, high to low and victim lines in the ground similarly this thing we can do over here we will make all of them capacitor loading are the same so we, in that case we could have a, effectively we can eliminate that delay for delivery there is a, this is an effective method for this is an effective method for in phase signal transition when, when signal line both of our you know, that means driver victim line driver is in the power supply state logic one and both are in the same direction in case of out of phase signal transition like this where we have a, a two uh, um, a capacitor capacitance, capacitance will be doubled to reduce propagation due to cross talk we need to adjust the driver strength of the aggressor and or the victim line such that there is no transfer signal delay from one part to another part through the effective capacitance for various data path we will adjust the driver strength for the aggressor and or the victim lines what we do there we will uh, increase the uh, power of aggressor or either we decrease the aggressor power of the victim this is uh, we have discussed about the uh, cross talk for um, lateral capacity right now we are going to switch to noise margin what is noise margin and voltage parameters noise and voltage parameters noise margin is closely related to the dc voltage characteristic how this parameter allows you to determine the allowable noise voltage on the input of a gate so that output will not be corrupted so that output will not be corrupted noise margin or noise voltage uses two parameter the low noise margin the low noise margin m and ml and the high noise margin nmh how they will define their nml the low no low noise margin is defined as the difference in maximum maximum low input voltage recognized by the receiving gate and the maximum low output voltage produced by the driving gate produced by the driving gate this is the maximum uh, low input which, which which can be recognized by and for that maximum uh, minimum voltage given by the output so this is an in the their difference nml is vil minus vol maximum low output voltage the value of nmh is the difference in the minimum high output voltage of the driving it and the minimum <coughs> high voltage recognized by the receiving it nmh is voh minus vih but there must be minimum of them there is the maximum of them and the minimum of them minimum high voltage output and minimum uh, minimum high voltage input and maximum low output the transfer characteristic uh, should switch appropriately that is uh, there they should be high gain the transition here there they should they should be switched abruptly like this because of the uh, in the high gain the transition for the purpose of calculating noise margin the transfer character and what the uh, and the definite voltage level for this RPR CMOS and limit point for unity gain point slope one here they have abruptly changing there because they have, should be high gain transition for uh, beta B and beta P should be greater than one that means their uh, uh, <coughs> amplification factor for uh, should be uh, ratio of their uh, uh, <coughs> ampl uh, amplification factor should be greater than one we have this is the voltage threshold voltage for uh, uh, NMOS and this is for uh, threshold voltage for uh, PMOS 
for that VIL, VIL, the input minimum voltage which can be recognized. This is the VIH minimum uh, output voltage which can be recognized. Then this is VOH. This is VTD. The output slightly degraded when the input is that is worse logic, legal, worse legal value, and that is called noise feed through or propagated noise. If either NMN or NMH for a gate are too small, the gate may be disturbed by noise that occurs on the input. What happens if NMN and uh, NMH are very small? We, um, in our uh, manufacturing, we, we make NMN and NMH too small. Then the gate may be disturbed by noise, noise that occurs on the input. An unskewed gate has equal noise margin, which maximizes immunity to arbitrary noise sources. The, the gate which having uh, unskewed, which having uh, the property of NML and NMH have gate too small, having, having the maximized immunity to the arbitrary noise source. If a gate sees more noise in the high or low input state, the gate can be skewed to improve that uh, noise margin at the expense of the other. That means if VTP transfer uh, <coughs> uh, threshold of P and threshold of N are same, then NMH and NMR are increases as the threshold voltage are increases. Quite often noise margins are compromised to improve speed. The ratio of uh, effective resistance for the fast transition related to the slow transition impacts the logical efforts and noise margin effector by 2 is common. Reducing the PMOS size also moves the switching point lower and reduces the inverted noise margin. If you go to uh, reduce the PMOS size that means uh, uh, the ratio of beta P by beta n will be uh, going to uh, around equal to 1 or less than 1 then we have the we can reduce the inverted noise margin. A stronger static load produces faster rising outputs. But increasing VO will reduce the noise margin and burn more static power when the output should be zero. DC analysis gives us the static noise margin specifying the level of noise that a gate may see for an indefinite duration. Larger noise pulses may be acceptable if they are brief. These are described by dynamic noise margin specified by maximum amplitude as a function of the duration. There are certain things which we have to discuss in brief here. They are, one is dynamic noise margin, which is uh, a, a function of a, a maximum amplitude, a function of the duration, in which dynamic means it will be stay for a time being. It should, it would not be abruptly changing. It is there for some time being. For that, we will have some maximum amplitude. We will define uh, a, a larger noise process for that. They are accepted. We use some circuit known as keeper circuits. Uh, here we are using a keeper circuit uh, mm, mm, uh, to check the leakage and noise margin. Can we uh, uh, we use keeper circuit? Here a keeper circuit uh, we have we have provided here. Here is a keeper circuit we have provided, which is a weak keeper for which is known as conventional. It is actually a circuit complementary circuit of uh, the kind of uh, uh, NMOS uh, uh, in uh, 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 transistor for NMOS transistor here which uh, with minimum length L uh, which is same all of, uh, across with that but having the weak uh, properties uh, in respect of that we keep implementation we are implementing this they are we, we put it in parallel to this differential keeper we can use different circuits are there then burning conditional keeper they are normal mode keeper and this is a burning keeper the mode con keeper no conditions thank you then what is the lower supply voltage how we will take care of this and how it affects low power design through voltage scaling the switching power distribution is similar digital T circuit is a strong function of the power supply voltage Therefore, reduction of VD emerges a very effective means of limiting the power consumption. If you have uh, the saving in power decision comes at a significant cost in terms of increased delay, circuit delay. 
so what we are uh, achieving while we are going to design a low power circuit we have a delayed circuit but you can see by examining the following presentation like this expression for the CMOS inverter this is uh, to uh, <coughs> propagation delay this is for uh, low and this is for uh, high rising pulse and this is for falling pulse this is the formula for it see this is the the propagation delay actually show that the negative effect of reducing the power supply voltage upon delay can be compensated for if the threshold voltage of the transistor is scaled down accordingly this is the delay as you go on normalized delay this is the delay and this is a power dissipation this is a power supply voltage normalized power dissipation what you are observing over here some somewhere else we have a point where we can uh, compromise that and that compromising we can be uh, achieved by, um, if we if session, our session voltage is uh, scaled down if we if we uh, go to decrease the session voltage the variation of proportion delay of CMOS inverter as a function of the power supply voltage and for different threshold when you are sure if you can. this is a normal delay this is the power supply and this is a threshold delay as we go on decreasing the threshold we, what we observe here the delay is also going to be decreased the reduction of threshold voltage from 0.8 to 0.2 volt can improve the delay at VDD 2 volt by a factor of 2 see a factor of 2 voltage you see for 0.8 to 0.2 volt so there is a delay of around 2 times we have less delay this is 4 uh, this is 4 and this is something 12 this positive influence of threshold voltage reduction upon proportion delay is especially pronounced at a lower power supply voltage for VDD less than 2 Variable threshold CMOS, VT CMOS circuit. Designing a CMOS logic gate and tiling low VT transistor uh, will inevitably lead to increased sub threshold leakage. And consequently, uh, uh, that means there is such a kind, kind of uh, channel will exist which, in which uh, uh, current will pass through uh, for low VT transistor, uh, transistor to higher uh, stand violation when the output is not switching. One possible way to overcome this problem is adjust the threshold voltage of the transistors in order to avoid leakage in the standby mode by changing the substrate wire. What is the threshold voltage between of and MOS transistor is a function of source to substrate voltage VSB. There will diagram. I will show you. In conventional CMOS logic circuit the substrate terminal of all NMOS transistors are connected to uh, ground position while the substrate terminal of all PMOS transistors are connected to VDD. In VT CMOS circuit tracking on the other hand the transistor is designed inherently with a low threshold voltage and the substrate bias voltage of NMOS and PMOS transistors are generated by a variable substrate bias control circuit as shown in the figure. 0.2 volt in active mode for an NMOS, 0.6 volt in standby mode. When it is switching, we need a threshold volt in of 0.2 volt for uh, when it is idle, it is in standby mode, 0.6 volt. This is threshold for that. See, and for that we use a kind of circuit which is known as substrate bias voltage, uh, sub variable substrate bias control circuit, and this is we use for making a circuit known as VTC low threshold VTC multiple threshold CMOS empty CMOS circuit for reducing leakage current in low voltage circuits in the standby mode we use two different types of transistors both MOS and BMOS with two different threshold voltage circuits see prevent threshold leakage in standby mode by using NMOS of a different uh, high VT and prevent uh, threshold leakage in standby mode using high VT NMOS we are using a PMOS with high, higher low VT transistors are typically used to design the logic gate where switching speed is essential whereas high VT transistors are used to effectively isolate the logic gates in standby and to prevent the leakage dissipation 
which is CMOS logic with low VT with inserted between them for high speed operation with low power consumption. When variable threshold voltage and multiple threshold voltage are infeasible due to technological limitation, system level architecture measures such as pipelining and hardware replication techniques offer feasible alternatives for maintaining the system performance. We will uh, that is it, that is it is not possible to have a uh, low VT transistors of uh, uh, using CMOS logic for multiple threshold CMOS empty MOS circuits are not possible, we go for pipelining and hardware application. Pi in pipelining, the dynamic power consumption of n stage pipeline structure with a low power supply voltage with the same functional throughput as the single stage structure can be approximated by P pipeline is equal to C total plus n minus 1 C register into VDD square that is with C register represent the capacitance switched by each pipeline register. The power reduction factor achieved in n stage pipeline structures, pipeline and P difference is CT. This is the power in uh, a circuit which is not pipeline, and this is the pipeline. Circuit. So this is the factor we got over here. This much we have: the clock, inputs, outputs, n stage pipe. So this much, this much of uh, uh, <coughs> advantage we offer there. The maximum pipeline is delay is equal to the clock period and the latency is n clock cycle. So replacing the original single stage logic block with the four stage pipeline running at the same clock frequency uh, and reducing the, uh, the power supply voltage from 5 volt to 2 volt will provide a switching power saving of our about 80% while maintaining the same throughput as before. This is the advantage we got in pipeline. Parallel processing approach, hardware replication. What we will do there? Consider an identical uh, element, so each uh, uh, implementing the logic function of input in parallel as shown in the figure. Assume that the consecutive input vector arrives at the same rate as in, in the single stage case. The input vectors are rotated to all the, the register of the N uh, and block parallel structure. The input registers are clocked at a lower frequency what's the clock divided by n processing blocks the total dynamic power dissipation of parallel structure neglecting the dissipation of the multiplexer is found as the sum of the power dissipated by the input register and the logic blocks operating at a clock frequency of f clock n and the output is operating a clock frequency of clock then p parallel will be given by this then this is for uh, parallel clocking for in a single input, a single block of n, we are getting it. Then there is also additional overhead which consider the input routing capacity, all of which are increasing section of n. If this overhead is neglecting, the amount of power reduction achie achievable is in a n block parallel implementation is p parallel, p reference is this. This is the factor, the lower power of switching power reduction. Uh, reduction uh, realizable with architecture driven voltage scaling is found assuming for zero threshold voltage as p parallel is greater than 1 upon n square so this is the advantage we got over there by using parallel or hardware application here this is the clock for input 1 input 2 clock 1 clock 2 what we do there this is divide by n we make them so T clock after this, this much time, this much output, we got for output for this, but output we are getting for every one of them. This is the parallel advantage of parallel processing. So this is how we improve uh, circuits performance while using low power supply voltages, which is uh, important for, uh, in, uh, for reducing the power consumption. Thank you. If you have any problem, you can con contact.